here we are preparing and we are live. Good morning, good morning across the world. I feel so cosmopolitan right now. I'm streaming from Palm Cove. Actually, I can't resist it because I'm doing it to everyone. Uh, check this out, everyone. Yeah, this is what digital nomad, this is what building a digital business looks like. And then from this beautiful location in Palm Cove, we are streaming all the way to the beautiful Dublin Island and having a chat with my epic, amazing, inspirational, gorgeous friend, Karen Dwyer. Oh my God, I'm so excited. So um, Karen has the most inspirational story um, and I'm going to let her share it because I can't do it any justice. But from being diagnosed with MS to like using a whole lot of really beautiful, soulful, connected tools to be able to take her from, you know, being diagnosed with MS to being completely healthy and epic and awesome and sharing her success principles with everyone else. So um, everyone, oh, I'm teary. Everyone meet the beautiful Karen. Karen, meet oh. everyone. <laughs> Don't set me off. Oh my goodness. I'm like, I'm nearly crying looking at where you are. I'm, <clears throat> it's like half 10 at night here. And I just saw your breakfast on the beach. And oh my goodness, it's that's going on the wish list. <laughs> it's so good to be here. Thank you. It doesn't feel like that long ago that you were in my house and we were going to river dance together and, no. you know, drinking pints in Dublin City. <laughs> Bring back pints in Dublin City. That's what I have to say. <laughs> Me too. I'd settle yeah. for that. If not where you are, I'd settle for pints in Dublin City. But alas, 100%. we are here. Thanks for having me on and, and for the very, very kind words. Um, yeah, I suppose what brings me here today, and it's funny, you know, when, we, when we're in the trenches and when we're really dealing with something that feels like you know I remember reading a quote that you know you haven't been buried you've been planted and it's interesting that you know you can look back and look at those times where it felt really really difficult and certainly when I was diagnosed with MS first yes it was difficult and spending years in and out of hospital um you know it's funny I was doing some research uh, over the last few days around MS and actually every five minutes somebody in the world is diagnosed with MS yeah, which is an 85%. There's a three to one ratio of women um, to men with MS as well. So I, I, I definitely was probably the hardest thing I've ever had to go through in my life. And there's been other stuff as we all do. We all have our own story and our stuff, big, small and everything in between. Um, but it's it's interesting and I never thought uh, really that I'd be able to look back and say it was the best gift I ever got. And that may sound really crazy. And and sometimes I feel kind of brash saying that because if somebody's dealing with MS now and they're in the throes of it, I can hear how that might sound cocky or ignorant. And for me, certainly having those times where, you know, I had complications, I had a, an infection on my brain, my liver count was seven times higher than it should have been. I was in intensive care at one point because the medication I was going on to had the tendency to slow my heart down, like just crazy stuff. And, you know, um, it's the things that actually had me become stronger. And I know that's very hallmark. It's very cliche, but I, de <laughs> I definitely would not be the person that I am today. And I suppose, you know, it wasn't until I had a relationship breakdown that I really took a look around and saw how I was living my life, saw how um, I was just surviving. I was just getting through each day just to bring my kids to school and I couldn't see any hope. I couldn't see any light. You know, people say, oh, there's light at the end of the tunnel. There was no lights. There was no lights. There wasn't even candles. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, you know, like I ended up, you know, fat, sick and depressed living at home with my mom, with my two kids, having given up my really successful career of opening up Jimmy Choo in Ireland, managing a radio station. And, you know, at one point I had to give up my career because my health had gotten so bad that, you know, my partner and I at the time, we moved into my mom's. We were trying to save some money and trying to buy a house. And on Christmas Day, he walked out. And we're great. We're great friends now, by the way. We're great friends now. 
But it's interesting because I remember the thought of I'm unemployed, I have MS, um, and the relationship wasn't going great anyway. But I thought, well, I can't be single because who's who's ever going to want me? So it was quite mean and nasty that we were staying with each other for the wrong reasons. And I'm sure he felt that he couldn't leave me because now he had a sick partner. How could he leave, you know? So in fact, it was it was the best thing that could have happened because it was the, that thing in particular that had me about a week later realize that I was really desperately unhappy and I was waiting on someone to fix me. I was mm. waiting on someone to come and fix me because I was broken. And I realized that actually it's my responsibility to make me happy, not anyone else's. And that was the moment. That was the moment. I actually wrote it in a journal that I was going to make myself happy. I'll never forget. It was the first week in January. And I then I wrote down two more sentences afterwards. I still have the journal. I wrote down, now I wrote down the word cure. I don't use the word cure anymore because, you know, legally and all those things. There's, yeah. anyway, I wrote down that I was going to overcome MS and bearing in mind, I'm at home with my mom, having given up my job on an invalidity pension with two kids, no car, sharing a car with my ex and quite overweight at the time as well. And here's me writing in this journal that I'm going to overcome my mess. I'm going to make myself happy. But the third one, I wrote down that I was going to help other people with a mess. I had no idea. I might as well have been writing down, I'm going to win the lottery, you know? Yeah. But a year later... A year later, almost to the day, I'm in my neurologist's office and he says, what have you been doing? And he's a really kind, tall man, like really gentle, quite softly spoken. So I was thinking, oh, shit, it's either really, really bad news or maybe it's something that I don't know, but I was trying to read all of his body language. So I started listing all of the things like meditation, vitamin D, you name it. And I was starting to talk really fast because I was nervous, wondering what he was going to say. And he said, OK, well, whatever you're doing, keep doing it. And I thought, oh, okay, well, like, what's the MRI results like? And he said, well, you've had burnout. And I was like, okay, well, like, what does that mean? Am I cured? No, 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 Karen, we don't use that word. I said, am I in remission? We don't use that word either. I'm like, please give me a word. He's like, well, it's burnout. Sometimes people in their 50s or 60s, the disease naturally leaves the body and you've had that. So whatever you're doing, keep doing it. Now, I, I made a very conscious effort to do what I did it I knew this was no just oh this just happened by accident I knew that I you know if I had of if I had not have made that's terrible English by the way if I hadn't made <laughs> that decision to make myself happy if I hadn't made that commitment if I hadn't put everything in place that I did over that year I know that I wouldn't have had that same result I know it um, and that might sound whatever way it sounds. Um, and I'm not saying that, oh, you make a commitment, you write something down, it's going to happen. I'm not for a second saying that, but I, I put myself kind of through the ringer for a year and had to face a lot of stuff that I didn't really want to face. Um, but, you know, it, it was a, an entire life transformation and really taking accountability and responsibility for myself. So I ended up doing what I knew best at the time and went straight back into a corporate career. And ended up actually rolling out an Australian company. Um, do you, I don't know if you, I can't remember what the Australian version of it is called. But anyway, uh, rolling out a fintech finance company um, over here. And I realized like six months into it, I was miserable. I was working like seven days a week. But it, I mean, it did allow me to buy a car. I'm not going to give out. It got me, allowed me to buy a car. I started to, you know, buy some clothes for myself because I think I still had underwear from when my first daughter was born and she was probably 15 at the time. So it definitely gave me, <laughs> it definitely gave me a little bit more confidence to, you know, get myself going. Um, but I realized that, you know, I started to get phone calls from people saying, oh, I, I heard what you did. Can you help me? And, and they would be dealing with MS. And I found myself every evening being on the phone to someone who wanted to hear what I did. And I find myself, you know, shushing my kids because I was I was there with the other person on the other end of the phone. And then I'd wake up the next day and go, oh, I forgot to tell them this, you know, or oh, I forgot to tell them that. So I ended up then starting to run some Zoom calls and running programs for people with MS. And then that then turned into more. And my last program um, 
I had two people that started walking again out of wheelchairs. So just, again, I'll go back to getting MS. I got to transform my life. I don't wish it on anyone, by the way. I'm not saying, oh, no, it was great. No, it wasn't. It was horrendous. But looking back now and what it kind of forced me to do, I, I can reframe it now as a gift. It certainly didn't feel like it at the time, but I now get to be with people who are dealing that knowing to an extent what they're going through and be able to hold their hand and, you know, take them through not only what worked for me, but many other global experts on disease and pain and, and lots of other things so that um, they can find their own path of discovery as well. So, um, yeah, I feel it's a real privilege when people kind of open up their heart and and trust you to help them. You know, so anyway, sorry if I wanged on there loads. <laughs> it was so cool. I love I love that you just because you're so passionate, right? And I love your story. And, and there's so many things I wanted to like bring up in that moment. But one of the things that um, is so prevalent, because you know, when speaking to Erin last week and speaking to Catherine and speaking to so many people in our community, um, there's always this moment. I think I'm no expert, right? But like from energetically, because you're such a strong, it's an Irene's here with us so she's like wow that's incredible Karen well done Jenna's like hello but I you know because you are such a strong clear determined brave soul like you probably were pushing through all the other signs that you had right and I think this is so true for those of us who are super successful I love how I said us those of us who are super successful um those of us who are determined you know driven uh, very focused humans the sometimes the signs come in we don't see the signs because we're like that's not us I can get through this I'm a determined human I'm like you know I, I'm strong, like nothing will get me down. And we just keep pushing through. And the universe gives us signs. It's like, take this. And we're like, no, you can't stop me. And the universe takes this. And we're like, you can't stop me, right? And because you are so strong, it took this thing to bring you down, right? So hopefully that's not the thing for everyone. But we get signs along the way, right? We get signs that this is not okay. And we get signs to make decisions for ourselves and I love that you said that you made a decision to make yourself happy because it really is that simple. And I know that sounds really condescending. It sounds it sounds even condescending to me, right? Just go and make yourself fucking happy and you're going to be fine. You know, but that decision that we make to do the thing that lights us up so we can be present with our family, with ourselves, that we can feel fulfilled because that fulfillment comes from the inside out, not the outside in, which is what's happening in the world today. You know, that tool, that thing that you did, just like these are the things that fill my cup. These are the things that make me happy. These are the things that I want to do. It's so powerful. And we don't give that enough credit, right? We don't. And actually, it's funny that you say that Irene is there because I went down and gave a talk for Irene um, down in Waterford got a few years ago now and Irene was like you have to do a program you have to do it. and I was like no no because I, I was petrified because you know you mentioned the word condescending I remember thinking people are going to think that I'm condescending or who am I who am I to and not tell you what to do but I went back and qualified as a coach because I wanted to show up as the best that I could be for people but it took me a long time I could have started it a long time before but I was petrified I, and I was really scared because I thought, well, you know, who am I to tell anyone who's going to want to listen to me? And what if what if it doesn't help? And it's every, every time I finish a program now, like it, it's it's funny and it's hilarious in a way, but I bawl my eyes out. I bawl my eyes. Out. Like I nearly get teary and I think about it now. Because we all come together and we say, you know, what's transformed for them. And the stories of people get the confidence to go back into the workplace or to change jobs because they were afraid that if they went into a stressful situation that it, they may, you know, trigger a relapse or that people decide that they, you know, want to get into a relationship or, or that they want to start moving out of a wheelchair or there's just, there's so many different experiences that people get from the one program that I just find mind blowing. And it's not, it, by the way, when I, it, I'm not trying to blow my own trumpet when I say this, because I'm just the conduit. 
I'm just the conduit and then they do what they do with it. And it's completely different for every single person, but it blows my mind every single time. Like I have to take a couple of days off after the end, after the end of every program because my eyes literally swell up from crying. <laughs> I love it. And I love what you just said there because I, you probably know and some of the guys on the call probably know, um, like I've been working with my aunties and, and like this beautiful collective of Maori women and, you know, they share Maori healing and we will go to festivals and we have these like uh, workshops where, you know, and they call it, you know, the organizers call them the healing workshops and people come in and it's like, can you heal me? And it's like, God, no, <laughs> no, we, we can't, we're not here to do that. It all comes from you, right? But what we do is hold space for you so you can bring in the energy and so that's such a perfect description that you hold space for people to find that own healing intuition within themselves. And again, I know that sounds super weird, right? Because we've got Irene on the, on the call and she's so passionate about people with Parkinson's and she's helping people, you know, find their strength and find their resilience and find ways to manage Parkinson's. And, you know, we've got Catherine who you was know, helping people with, you know, recover from brain injuries. And so it's not, so, it's not about saying, hey, meditate you're going to be right mate <laughs> but it's more around you know find the space within yourself to be able to connect to whatever it is that you need in that particular time right and so from the very ancients you know and my aunties would say we use a stick and she said we hold a stick because the stick represents trees and trees represent oxygen and so when you hold a stick you're holding wood which is oxygen so you can breathe and you do stick movements to open the chest which allows you to breathe and so these things that look like games actually all have this other meaning to help us reconnect to really what is natural yeah because yeah. health, health is natural it's, right it's, sorry martin you go, go ahead starting. No, no, no I was just going to say, I think, I think as women in particular and, and as humans, but I, I definitely see in women that every, it, there's a tendency that everybody else gets looked after first and then women tend to be the last on the list. Um, and there's definitely a piece around that where it can be uh, a challenge to unlearn those things and to really put yourself first without apology. And that's even hard for yourself never mind other people getting used to this kind of new way of being but um it's a real beautiful thing to experience and to be with somebody while they're doing that you know and when they come up against blocks to really hold that space for them to you know brush on through it it's it's uh it's kind of magic yeah now one of the things that I love that you've done, like obviously you hold space for people with MS and you help them navigate, you know, how to be well and being well is like one place. Um, but I know that you've also like used your experience to do other great things like your gratitude journal. Yes, I sometimes forget about that. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, I suppose that was the first thing that I did post um, realizing that, you know, MS had left the building. Um, and that was one of the, the tools, I suppose, it was one of the, my starting points for, I suppose, firing and wiring new neural pathways so that I got out of my own way of seeing and acting and occurring in the same way, which was um, that life was hard. And so, you know, when I was at home with two kids on an invalidity pension, I found it tough and, and it was tough, but I started to see, once I started practicing gratitude, I started researching the science of it and the power of it, um, that you really can fire new neural pathways. So you can really change around your attitude. And I start, you know, with the quote of, you know, when you start to change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. Mm -hmm. So for me, I started seeing like, oh my God, I'm living at home to, oh my God, I'm living rent free. And I get to hang out with my mom every day. And even though she annoys the hell out of me sometimes, she cares so much. She cares so much that she's willing to prod and deal with, <laughs> you know, yeah. maybe me not, you know, receiving it in the best way. And, you know, I really did start to stop and smell flowers. I remember stopping one day on the way to the shop with my youngest daughter 
And I remember stopping and there was these beautiful flowers growing over a neighbor's wall. And I remember stopping to smell them. And the smell was like nothing I'd ever smelled before. And I remember laughing to myself going, oh my God, you've turned into one of those people being like, oh my God, the flowers smell so great. <laughs> like that moment of, are you one of those absolute bleeps, you know? But it, it really did give me an opportunity to release some of the anger that I didn't realize I was harboring so much of. I want to tap into that because yeah. I have a brother with MS. I don't know if you know that. You probably do. I have a brother with MS. We don't talk anymore. We do talk. But anyway, that's a whole other story. Um, <laughs> so cool. and because, <laughs> but, yeah, I know I bumped into him in the shopping center at Christmas time. I haven't seen him for five years and he was super awkward. I'm like, hi. And he's like. <laughs> oh, wow. Anyway, I digress. We're going to have a call offline about that, by the way. <laughs> it's not me, it's him. I'm like, hi. Oh! He's like, oh, yeah. I'm like, let's see each other. He's like, oh, no. I'm like, okay, that's you, babe. I good. <laughs> um, and so when I've always been one to have a look at the metaphysical elements behind, and again, this is not about, this is not a suggestion for anyone to look at metaphysical reasons. For me, I've always really wanted to look at all elements of why something happens, you know, because um, I really believe that we're not individual parts of this human space, right? Where there's here's my physical being, I've got an emotional being, and I've got a, a, I've got a, an emotional or a spiritual being, and I've got a mental being inside of my, you know, this frame. And so all three work together. And so you know that I'm not my thoughts, I'm not my body, and I'm not just my spirit. Do you know, I'm literally all three. I'm my thoughts, I'm my spirit, I'm my body, and those three work together. And so whenever there's something, I always really look at how is the integration between the three you know we've used the isms of body mind spirit like a lot right but really those three centers that work in harmony to help us show up in this beautiful way so the long version of that was looking at the metaphysical reasons behind you know illness and looking at the metaphysical reasons behind um you know trauma and some of those other things that we suffer and how do we then use affirmations in that space and one of um, if you follow that pathway, say a Louise Hayes, and you look at that to explore some of the things, she says that MS, which you probably looked at already, is the re suppression of female energy, right? So it's interesting that you said that three times more women than men get MS. And are these women, do they tend to be high achievers? Mm -hmm. It's a really, really interesting thing that you just said, and there, there's so much there to pick up on, but, it, but it's interesting because any time that I get someone that wants to come and work with me, they just want, most of the time, they want the diet and the exercise because it's like, oh, just give me the quick fix. And it's an inside job. So I won't do that. I could do that. I could. And I probably could do it over a weekend to give them everything, but it's really important to me that I give someone the best opportunity that they can to transform everything that they have going on. And I think it's a really, it's imperative that somebody deals with what's going on internally. Mm. It, it's a must, in fact. Say, for example, if somebody comes and, and they say, right? I, I want to have the diet or I want to have the exercise. Tell me what to eat. Tell me what to do, whatever it might be. And they go and do that. And their internal, uh, you know, whatever comes up, their self-sabotage, whatever it might be, that comes up. They're, start, they're doing quite well. And after a few weeks, they go all the way back down to the beginning, almost like snakes and ladders, probably feeling worse than when they did mm -hmm. to begin with. So it's so important to deal with if there is trauma there, if there is you know, limiting beliefs or whatever is there, that has to be nurtured first. It's like building a house. If you don't build that foundation first, you're going to have to go back and fix it at some stage. So that's probably a good place to start. But it's so interesting that you say that because I, I do believe that the whole human needs to be nurtured, not mm -hmm. the disease. Yeah. In as a bonus, the disease gets dealt with. I love it. The whole human gets nurtured, not the disease. Because we focus on the disease, right? You know, we focus on the illness and we don't actually look at the other things. And so 
I love that you and Irene and so many of the people in our community are really looking at the bigger picture of the person because a disease is not the person. It's, it's, not, it's, a, it's a symptom of whatever else is going on. Such an interesting piece. I love yeah. that. I love that. And there was something else in my field that I wanted to bring up just then and I can't remember what it was. But it'll come back to me, right? Yeah, well, well I, you started asking me about gratitude and I went off on a whole other tangent. Yeah, I published a gratitude journal. Oh. I think that's what you're saying. <laughs> this is it. I love that you published a gratitude journal. And here's the thing about gratitude. Here's the thing about gratitude. I love gratitude. And I've been writing in my gratitude journal. So for those who don't know, Irene, Karen. So I put to my phone because it's where I can see all the comments. So Irene, Karen and I were all on a program with the beautiful Dee Hutchinson. Oh, was it 2017? 2017 yeah wow yeah 2017 um and oh it's raining i'm gonna have to shift over a little bit we'll see how that goes um and we were talking about gratitude and starting to keep a gratitude journal and starting to keep notes and i remember this happens to me because i've religiously kept a gratitude journal since then but sometimes it can feel like a to-do sometimes the gratitude journal feels like more to do and then we lose the energy of it and so like when I manifested going to Croatia and when I manifested like doing other things that happened because I had the energy that sat behind it, not necessarily just, I'm going to have to move, not necessarily just the, um, yeah, oopsie, it's in the puddle. There we go. I'm under the umbrella. So when I had the energy with the gratitude, it was so much different than just going through the process. And so I can find myself sometimes in my gratitude practices, like I am grateful for all these things, but when you bring the vibration and the energy to it, it actually changes everything, right? And so this is something that I'm super mindful at the moment because we can go through this ritual or this practice, but without bringing energy to it. And I think that changes everything too. What do you think? Yeah, I totally agree. I totally agree. And, and it's, I, I love using the saying, you know, it's, it's like sometimes like exercising. I don't like exercising, but I love having exercised. I don't, feel, <laughs> even though I published a gratitude journal, I don't feel like practicing gratitude some days. I'm like, screw that. I don't feel like it. I'm out of shit day or, you know, yeah. but when I do the feeling it, it, it's, it's a pick me up and you're right. Sometimes it does feel a little bit like a chore and that's okay. You're not supposed to be happy all the time. It, life isn't designed to be like that you're not yeah. supposed to be and I'd be worried if you were like la, 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 all the time that's okay but it's when you do really take a moment and sometimes I find myself going oh wow I I, I really didn't realize that I was grateful for this and that sometimes can be the little thing that turns around your entire day you know I did a post within one of my groups um, the other day and actually asked uh, what was the part of their body they were most grateful for and somebody said um, my eyes oh. and then they gave a big explanation around um, when they were diagnosed with MS that they got optic neuritis and then they lasered there was loads of other things but anyway she went on to say you know eyes to see you know, my child and my baby and I get to read this book and I, and the way that it, it went on, I, I won't reveal all the details, but from that one thinking about that one little thing, she just got so present to all that is that's around her and she's in the throes of MS. So it can be the little thing that takes you out of a mindset where you could be feeling really shit and it could be just that little reframe, that little neuro neuro pathway that just fires in the direction when you need it so yeah I agree with you I don't feel like practicing gratitude all the time but I know when I do I feel better than I did before 100%. Yeah. and for me like one of the things that are, are super um, prevalent is the energy around that particular practice and sometimes it's hard and so then I just go back to basics you know I'm grateful that you know we have plumbing. I'm grateful for a blue sky. I'm grateful for the smelly flowers or whatever those things are, right? The things that are just so simple, especially when it's hard to find something. And sometimes it is hard to find something. My, my go-to, if I'm, if I'm really struggling to find something to be grateful for, I, I always come back to my breath. Mm. Oh, that's cool. The ability to breathe. And all of a sudden it then brings me down into that heart energy, into that 
kind of solar plexus into that area. And it's like, it just brings this kind of blanket of calm. That's my trigger that when I am feeling like I really don't know what to, what to write here, that's always the one that has me come back and center myself. Love it. Yeah. I love, it. I love the fact that you were having your breakfast under an umbrella on a beach. I am so, I can't yep. wait to visit you. I haven't had my breakfast yet, but it does look delicious. <laughs> That is the most Instagram looking breakfast ever. Oh, yes. I have taken a photo. I should be all right. Thank you. I'll shuffle you know it. Do you know what I put on my breakfast this morning? And it reminded me of you. I put what? organic organic coconut flakes. I was like, oh, yeah. the fat breakfast is coming out. That reminds me of you. <laughs> You're gorgeous. Yep. Organic coconut flakes. Yeah, I they're love my thing. It. Yeah. Know, they're really nice. So damn cool. But tell me, beautiful Karen, oh, when can I see you? When can you see me? Like, I think it's going to be next year at this stage. Mm, I think it's going to be this year. Be next year. I reckon yeah. it's going to be this year. I'm going to make it my mission, but we'll see. Um, come to Costa Rica. Glad you, know I'm, you know I'm heading to Costa Rica next month, right? Does everyone know I'm heading to Costa Rica next month? You know, there's a two grand fine if anyone goes on holidays from Ireland at the moment. <laughs> brought my phones. Yeah. It's worth the fine. Just build it into the budget. I know. Uh, it's, there's a travel ban in Australia. Australians are not allowed to leave. You have to apply to leave the country. So I've applied for my exit visa and here's the space, right? So I'm like, you know, I believe and I trust that the universe is conspiring to bring me, to bring through everything that we need. I've booked my flight. I booked my accommodation. I think it, look, it looks like I've sold my car. Um, like all these things. So I'm like, I'm going. Like the government thing will come through, right? It just has to be. And so that's my gratitude piece, that piece about, okay, well, I know this is happening. The energy, every part of me is there. And yes, there are some barriers, but I'm like, it's it's possible. And mm. so I can focus on all the things like, every, all these flights get cancelled and people aren't allowed to leave and all the stuff that people are, you know, bringing forward. But that's not in my field. You know, what's in my field is this space around this is what I'm doing. I'm doing it for the highest good. Um, I'm so grateful that I'm going, you know, and the energy that I bring to that is what allows that to come forth, right? So I love that. I'm going to start practicing gratitude for going to Costa Rica. <laughs> yeah, do it. That's how I got to Croatia. So for those who don't know, and I was speaking to Kirsten last night, it was an impromptu chat. Um, I, when I went to Croatia, I'd it was two years ago, right? So I was in Bali at this time two years ago and I was working with a company in Bali and uh, I'd been working to get to Bali so I could be on the ground for them. And as soon as I moved to Bali, they um, they gave my position to someone else. So I was like, mother flippers, this is not okay. So I'd moved to Bali and I'm like, well, great, right? So here I am to be closer to you guys. And now I'm not here with you guys anymore. And I was like, I need, I need a new tribe. And so I had two friends in that space and like come to Croatia, mind Bali's in Croatia. And I'm like, I don't know how I'm going to get to Croatia. I just lost my biggest contract. Anyway, so I was like, I know I'm going to get there. And the gratitude, and this is what brought me through. I would write and I would feel it. And it's like, I'm going to be in Croatia and I'm going to be meeting all the mind Valley people and I'm going to build a new community. And I'm so excited of this thing and I know it's happening and I'm going to go on this date and I'm going to stay with like, you know, Jade and Nicole Gibson and all these people. That's what's going to happen. Two weeks before, Jade is like, have you bought your flight? I'm like, no, nah, hasn't come through yet. Right. Two days later, I landed the biggest contract I've ever landed. I was like, right, there's my ticket. Ticket paid, accommodation paid, all the things done. And I left, right? So it's just, there's that space of breathing life into it, but really knowing with your whole being and not paying attention to the other noise that, you know, everyone's got an opinion, right? Particularly when you're not well, or particularly when you're doing something outside of the norm. Mm. Yeah, totally, I totally agree with you. And you like, I, I firmly believe that you've got to watch all the people around you as well and who you're spending your time with or listening to that it's, it's really important. And sometimes, sometimes that person might be yourself when you hear yourself coming out with language or opinions or beliefs that really do not serve you that you really need to check yourself. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's an interesting one, actually, when I was diagnosed first and even afterwards, 
you know, my mom would be saying, oh God, you better go back for an MRI and get checked. And I'd be like, mom, stop it. So you got to yeah. watch out for people's listening and worry for you as well. Like it's, it's an interesting time. But I remember like even when diagnosed first that, you know, I'm, like, oh, I'm so worried and you'll have to do this and you'll have to do that. And it's like, stop it. But it really is when you are so committed and focused, you just put that noise aside. It's like creating that energetic barrier around you that shit just bounces off it. <laughs> yeah. And for everyone yeah. who's watching and listening to the call now, good morning, Erin, I do see you. Like this is such an important thing for us when we're recreating something in our lives or doing something differently, that space around not listening to the noise that's going to take you away from that space because it's so darn important. I, you know, there are people in my family who don't, get the way that I think and they're always you know and they're coming from a place of love right being like oh well you know be careful and what about the coronavirus because literally I'm up here in my tropical paradise that like if you look around there's no masks here we don't have like there's no coronavirus in North Queensland life is just normal maybe a few less people and some other shitty rules right but you know so I'm like oh I'm going out into the world you know we're going to go and into the world. We're going to do this thing. And so people are like, well, be careful in the world. You're going to get on an aeroplane. I'm like, yep, I'm going to get an aeroplane. It's going to be fine. Caught hundreds of them in my life before. And so there's this space where, well, the people come from a place of love. If it's not our perspective, it can be challenging. So. Yeah. Yeah, I hear you. God, I can't wait to hear those words. This is your captain speaking. <laughs> I'll record them. Yeah, please do. I'll record them. Yeah, sounds like a plan. Yeah, I think it's, I don't know about you, but it used to be an Irish thing. And people used to get like kind of cross about it that when an airplane would land that people would clap. Is that a worldwide thing or is that an Irish thing? Yeah, that's I think I will. I think I'm going to become a clapper. I'm going to become a clapper when a plane lands and I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. Yeah, maybe I will be a clapper this time because I've always been like, really, you people with the clapping, but I'll be like. Yeah, I, I think I think it's okay now. I think it might be so like now, a worldwide, like, let's have a cheer. We're going to start a movement, the happy clappers. Let's I mean, let's bring really plane journey plane clapping, clapping back. back. Plane clapping. <laughs> so cool. So cool. I have a question for you. It's one of my favorite questions at the moment. You know, I feel like so pod cast you when I ask this question because here's my question that I want to ask everyone it's like you know Lewis House and he's at the end he's like here's my three truths question this is the Martin question and my question is and I love this because it asks us to really tap into who we are it's like who is Karen when she's at her best mm. oh god that's a really good question I know I'm really nervous for a reason who is Karen when she's at her best um Karen is on, it feels weird talking in the third person. I'd say I'm unstoppable. I'm unstoppable, whether that's my own internal BS or external BS is that when I'm at my best, I am unstoppable. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's, it's true. Yeah. Yeah. Because you only have those moments and it's like, I, I it's, it's interesting because I suppose what I've experienced I now know myself to be someone who can deal with anything, anything. And I'm not inviting it, but I trust myself and I know, and I have this inner unshakability that I know whatever happens in life, I can deal with it. That's cool. That's cool. Because then it allows you to be happy with what is, right? Because so many of us are worried about the unknown. And if, if we could just take away that worry, the worry about, you know, all the things that may never happen. Good morning, Deborah. That is such a perfect gift, right? To be able to be unshakable. Mm. It's freaking epic. So epic. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it took me going through the shakable stuff to, <laughs> to come out to the side, you know, but at least there was a, a positive at the other side of it it's like well do you know what if i've dealt with that i can i can deal with anything. do anything yeah yeah but i think that's true for all of us right but we get conditioned with all the things 
but if we knew and this is the the line in the sand thing for me if you just knew that everything was like we're never going to be dealt with something that we can't handle like i wholeheartedly believe we're not given something that we can't manage it's just not in the space right so i think it's important for us to realize that whatever we're being offered in whatever shape it looks like i don't think we're ever tested beyond our, the means of our capabilities and however we're being tested or however we're being challenged, while it may feel like it's stopping us now, it's that space. And again, it's not cliched. It's not about me being cliched. It's that space where I don't believe that you're being challenged beyond what you're able to cope with. I just don't believe that that's what this loving universe gives to us, right? Agree. Yeah, totally agree. And I, and I always think now, and sometimes it takes me a little bit longer to get there than I'd like, but anytime there's a a breakdown in you know big small whatever it might be I always think I always get to the point of okay I'm in whatever is going on and I'm on the edge of a breakthrough what is it what is the breakthrough and I think when you can be in a shit storm whatever it might be it might be that your kid won't eat dinner or it might be something way bigger but it's like you know that you're on the edge of a breakthrough once you're in a breakdown. And it's like when you can look for that and when you can pull that towards you, that's when you know you're like, okay, come on, I can deal with it. That's the point that Erin made, right? So Erin, when she was telling last week about her story, she's like, here's the thing. It was that my child wouldn't eat his dinner. That was like the straw that broke the back, right? Wow. That I didn't face- hear that. Ah, yeah, yeah. Or maybe she didn't say another thing. Maybe that's because I speak to so many people and I speak all the time. But yeah, the, the thing that snapped for her, the thing that had her like going, I'm done. I'm out. This is not okay. Was that her child would make dinner. The thing. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, it's amazing. It's amazing when a kid doesn't eat dinner, what it can do to your insides. Like I have to do box breathing before I even turn around because <laughs> like... My youngest, well, anyway, I won't bother boring you with the stuff, but Jesus Christ, there is no anger. Like you've just spent whatever amount of time sweating in the kitchen and then your kid goes, I'm not hungry or I don't want that. Or, I don't like it. You're like, I think if you're, if you're a parent and you don't stick your two fingers up behind your kid's head, are you even a parent? <laughs> <laughs> are you even an auntie? Same thing will happen. Like, you know, I end up cooking like three meals. I'm like, oh, I'm not doing this anymore. I'm just going to buy you food. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sure. Our beautiful soul. Before we sign off, because I'm I know it's late for you, I would last like to just pick in two things. The first one is uh, if people wanted to connect with you, how can they do that? Sure. Well, as you know, I'm building a new website at the moment. So in a couple of weeks it'll be karendwire.com. Yippee. But in the meantime, you'll find me on Instagram under I am Karen Dwyer, or you could get me through the MS to success website it's not a very good website but you know um but instagram or facebook uh, karen dwyer page or uh, i am karen dwyer on instagram is probably the easiest way yay 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 yeah. and is there anything else that you feel you want to say or share before we sign off today um i would like to say thank you And I would like to acknowledge you for being the kind of part. Oh God, I want to start crying for being the, (laughs) I want to acknowledge you for being the kind of human being that really cares and is so empathetic and intuitive that can get into someone's world, see where they are and see the beauty in people without even having to say a word. You've got the biggest heart. You are such an incredible person at what you do. And I just trust you implicitly with what you do and how you do it. And you're such a gift. You're just such a gift and I love you. And thanks for having me on. I love you. I've always loved you. And I'm so grateful that I get to hang out with people like you. It's I'm the one who's blessed. I have the most incredible people in my field and I'm just I pinch myself grateful every day that I have connected with such amazing and inspiring people I don't know what I did to deserve this but hey I'll take it (laughs) good good thank Uh, you thank you no thank you that's really sweet I love it 
I love you. I love everyone yeah. who's here. Go. I have can't see any comments, so I, I know you said go back and yeah, go yeah. back and have a have a read later. I'm sure there'll be more people who catch up because it's been so darn cool. Um, but I'm just so grateful that we get to share this this time together, and I can't wait to see what the new website looks like and how we can be of service to you. Thanks All for right. being awesome. I love you. Love you. Okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs>